Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago and we are studying about the prayer of consecration. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your glorious love. Father, we thank you for your marvelous love for us. Father, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Father, your love endures forever. Father, your faithfulness endures forever. Father, we pray you teach us your word today. Father, we pray you teach us how to pray. And Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding and revelation revelation in your word your will and your love father we pray you grant us ideas concepts and insights father we pray you show us great and mighty things that we do not know father we pray you show us wonderful things out of your word father we pray you grant us word in due season father we thank you for answers and solutions and father we thank you so much for healings signs wonders and miracles by the name of our lord jesus father we thank you for your mighty hand father we thank you so much for meeting the needs of the people father you are good you are awesome you are wonderful and you are mighty and father we pray for elections in our state tamil nadu and in other states father we pray you grant us leaders according to your heart and your will people who fear you who are able who will do your will people who will do good to all especially to those of the household of saints father i pray that you grant us leaders who will lead and guide this nation in your ways and in your path and according to your word and father we pray you stop the wicked from coming to positions of power authority and influence father we pray you remove the wicked from positions of power authority and influence father we pray the rod of the wicked does not rule over our lands father by the authority of your word in the name of jesus we bind the works of the devil concerning the elections in our state tamil nadu and in other states in india in the name of jesus let every scheme every plan every device every weapon of the devil concerning the elections be broken and destroyed father we pray you watch over the elections father we pray that the elections be conducted in a just and fair manner father we pray there be no fraud and cheating divine and uh, deceiving or any form of uh, crooked practices and father we pray that you lead and guide the people father we pray you open the eyes of their understanding that they may vote according to your heart and your will father father we thank you so much for your mighty help father you are good you are great you are the most high and father you still rule in the kingdoms of men father you set up kings and you remove kings father we thank you for your mighty help for us father we praise you we worship you and adore you father in the name of our lord jesus we pray amen hallelujah Hallelujah to Jesus glory be to Jesus blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus now as you all know that from now on we will be publishing the prayer messages only in YouTube right and if you have been receiving um our audio messages previously and for some reason if you haven't all you need to do is just come to YouTube and you will find the prayer messages and i'll i'll keep announcing this so that people will get familiar with the message all right then um let's go to john chapter 15 john chapter 15 verse 7 if you abide in me and my words abide in you you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you hallelujah to jesus so what's the condition for a good prayer right you should be in jesus and your word and the words of jesus should abide in you right see prayer ought to be forged by the word of god prayer ought to be born out of the seed of god's word god's word ought to be the foundation for any type of prayer whatever the type is you know time whether it is a prayer of consecration or whether it is a prayer of faith or whether it is the prayer of uh, intercession any type of prayer god's word has to be the foundation prayer is birthed out of that word and prayer ought to be birthed out of the relationship that you have with the father a living abiding relationship do you understand this yeah let's also read ephesians chapter 6 ephesians chapter 6 and let's read verse 18 
praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me that utterance may be given unto me that i may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel prayer should be a way of life for a christian a christian ought to be a man and a woman of prayer do you understand that then prayer is not for some some super spiritual christians no prayer is for every christian our lord jesus was a man of prayer when he was on earth he was praying all the time he prayed all through the night he would get up early in the morning and pray when he's about to do a miracle he would pray right jesus prayed <laughs> he would be conducting a meeting and halfway through he will stop the meeting send the people and go alone by himself into the mountain and he would be praying and he will be praying till early in the morning see see jesus prayed in his prayer life and he taught prayer right and there are scripture after scripture where he teaches people to pray so prayer is is a very important part of the christian life it's it's a vital part of the christian life word of god and prayer are not something that you can do without as a christian right it's like food and water you eat your food you drink your water right if you want to be healthy that's how it is with a christian you got to have the word of god and you have to have prayer that's the only way you're going to have a good healthy christian life do you understand this yeah all right then so we are to be people of prayer and we we ought to be praying for a variety of things right we ought to be praying for the nation we ought to be praying for the people who are who haven't known the lord jesus so that they also will come to the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ we ought to be praying for the uh, for the kings and those in authority we have to be praying for the body of christ now that's what this passage is talking about praying with all, always with all prayer all manner of prayer and supplication in the spirit yield yourself to the holy ghost you know make yourself available to him tell him lord holy ghost i am ready i am willing lead me teach me to pray you know he will use you that that's how i learned how to pray and i made myself available to the lord jesus and over a period of time he kept leading me and guiding me and teaching me more and more about prayer and he started using me in different ways in prayer right make yourself available see you may not know all the different passages in the bible about prayer you may not know that there are varieties of prayer i didn't know either <laughs> right when i started off i didn't know what i'm teaching you today no but the holy ghost led me and guided me and taught me step by step step by step you know you you can know things in your spirit which your head doesn't know yet eh? if you will make yourself available to the lord jesus he will use you he will guide you he will teach you right availability is a very important factor make yourself available and the holy ghost will is a great teacher you know the holy ghost teaches in such a way that anybody can understand whether you know a lot of scriptures or whether you hardly know anything now when i started out i hardly knew anything right but the holy ghost taught me in ways that i could understand the holy ghost led me and guided me holy ghost will give you uh, custom made teaching plans for you <laughs> you understand that right no matter where you are he can teach it in a way that you can understand that you can grasp and you can follow so lean on the holy spirit that's the that's how prayers become effective in order for your prayers to be powerful your prayers ought to be rooted and grounded in the word of god and you ought to learn how to be led by the holy spirit in prayer if you learn these two things <laughs> hey you can be used mightily in prayer hallelujah to jesus hallelujah to jesus let's go to matthew chapter 26 we are studying about uh, the prayer of consecration and this is a vital part of prayer because for a christian our purpose in life is to do the will of god right that's why we are here <laughs> why are we on this earth we are not here just to you know occupy space no we are here on this earth so that we can accomplish the plan of god 
the great apostle paul you know uh, he he had accomplished a lot by this time when he was writing this epistle to the philistines and um, uh, i'm sorry did i say philistine <laughs> philippians right and um, so when he was writing this letter to the philippians uh, you know he was uh, Oh, he he was you know he had accomplished a lot he had he has reached a certain age in his life but then you know and he had suffered a lot you know in his effort to do the will of god um, he faced plenty of sufferings and he by god's grace and help he has been overcoming them and he is continuing to do the will of god at this point of time he is having a tussle inside his heart you know that there is a, there are conflicting desires in him and he talks about that go with me to philippians chapter 1 philippians chapter 1 and um towards around verse 20 let's read from verse uh, 21 for to me to live is christ to die is gain see that that that's our motive everything we do we do for christ everything we do we do for jesus right see the bible says that jesus died for all of us so that those of us who are alive would live for him and not for ourselves right that this living for ourselves should, should slowly you know disappear from our life we live for jesus right we live for jesus as you grow in your walk with jesus you will see that that, that your personal selfish self centered desires would disappear <laughs> that they will go more and more you will start about thinking about what can i do for jesus how can i uh, serve the kingdom of god how can i accomplish god's plan for my life what is my part in doing great things for the kingdom of god right and you, you your mind will start changing as you as you start your walk with jesus as you spend time in his presence studying his word um, spending time in his presence you know getting involved within the church right you, your mind and your attitude will change you know the holy spirit will change you from glory to glory to glory right so you know you will come to this place <laughs> you will start learning these things so when you hear such things you no know, don't get scared oh boy that sounds way too spiritual for me right no allow these thoughts to be planted in your heart see that's what i do you know when i, when I began with the, my walk with god i heard thoughts like this you know and i was not like that <laughs> and i had way and i had to grow a lot you know i be to begin with i was a selfish self-centered fellow right <laughs> my father used to joke all the time you know and he used to ask me do you know what is the costliest fish in the world i said what you <laughs> would say selfish and i no i i was a selfish i i was thinking about only me all the time right but um <laughs> see after i came into the lord jesus the holy ghost started changing me radically so much so that more and more he is teaching me how to think about him and his kingdom and and not not so much about me right focus on jesus focus on the plan of jesus and plan of god and focus on how to be a blessing to other people that's where he is leading me more and more and more and more and he will teach you also if he can teach me and help me he will definitely teach you and help you you understand that why is why are we talking about these things because prayer of consecration is vital to accomplish the plan of god for your life you need to learn this prayer so that you can overcome trials and temptations and uh, accomplish what god wants you to do on the, in this planet you are here for a reason look at what paul says for to me to live is christ and to die is gain but if i live in the flesh this is the fruit of my labor yet what sh- i shall choose i would not notice he's having a struggle here right <laughs> on one hand he wants to die and go and be with jesus forever you know he has faced quite a lot of trouble uh, trying to accomplish the plan of god for his life if if you face the kind of things that he faced you will also <laughs> and these thoughts going on the inside of you right you would want to depart you know how i have heard people who are facing normal problems you know which are very very common to people and right? pop all faced extraordinary kind of sufferings right and most of us don't come anywhere close to the kind of sufferings that paul went through in order to do the will of god 
<laughs> I have seen people, you know, having common sufferings, which is common for everybody. You know, people are you know, just 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 day-to-day -day problems or some kind of a disease or some kind of a problem that has been going on for a long time, and they would say, uh, "I I I I just think, you know, I should die and just go be with the Lord Jesus." And some people say, "Take me, Lord Jesus." They are like Elijah. Uh, I I have enough, right? <laughs> You remember how Elijah played while he was under the juniper tree, right? He would say, Father, take me, take me, right? I'm not better than my father's, you know, just take me, right? You know, they, they people pray prayers like that. But, you know, Paul, on the other hand, he faced serious problems trying to, you know, while he was publishing the Lord Jesus, you know, proclaiming the Lord Jesus all over the planet. And um, so he is like... Um, saying I, I'm, I'm having a struggle on the inside me on one hand I want to desire I have a desire to depart and be with the Lord Jesus Christ and which is far better <laughs> now you should underline that that's far better being with the Lord Jesus in heaven far better any the earth doesn't have anything that it can offer which can even come close to what you know <laughs> what what Jesus offers. Do you understand? Being with the Lord Jesus in heaven is far better than anything this earth could offer. That's the truth about the matter. Right? This this earth cannot offer anything that even comes close to it. Do you understand this? Yeah? And then he says in verse 24, Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh, to live in the body is more needful for you. See, there is a purpose there is a purpose. See, that's why he is wanting to stay here. There is a purpose. To abide in the flesh is more needful for you. He didn't say, I want to stay here, you know, I haven't traveled the world yet, you know, I haven't seen many countries. I want to have different varieties of experiences. Um, I haven't eaten this type of food, which is uh, excellent in China, or that, that kind of uh, tourist place, which is good in Switzerland. No, that's, that's what he's talking about. He's saying, I, I have a purpose here. I need to stay here because if I stay here, I can be a blessing to the body of Christ. If I stay here, I can do something good for the people. Do you, do you, do you see this? Hmm? It's, it's so very important to understand this. Why are we here? Now, Jesus said it like this. Um, go with me to John chapter 6, verse 38. You know, Jesus, the motivation for the life of Jesus is just this. He wanted to do what God wanted him to do. He wanted to fulfill the plan of God for his life. That was the motivation for the life of Jesus. Notice this verse uh, 38. For I came down from heaven. Why did Jesus come to the earth? Not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. See, Jesus was governed by this desire to fulfill the plan of God for his life. Jesus was moved. Jesus was ruled. Jesus was motivated by this one desire. I have to do what God the Father wants me to do. That was his motivation. You know, he was a child, in a 12-year-old child. And look at the thought process that went on inside him. Notice, um, towards the end of... Uh, Luke chapter 2, you know how Jesus stayed back in Jerusalem. Mary and uh, Joseph didn't notice him for a day. And then they, they searched him for uh, three days. And uh, finally, they found him in the temple. And uh, so when Mary was saying, why did you deal with us like this? You know, and uh, Jesus answered uh, uh, Mary and he said this. And he said unto them, how is it that you sought me? Right? He's asking, why, did, why were you looking for me in uh, all those different places? Didn't you know that I should be about my father's business? You should have come directly to the temple. This is where the father's business is done. And I am supposed to be doing the father's business. So I, I'm, I'm here. You, you should have come directly here. You would have found me. Right? How is it that you sought me? <laughs> right? Notice. He's saying, Wist you not that I must be about my father's business? Notice as a child, 12 year old child, Jesus was motivated by the plan of God for his life. This is what made Jesus get up every day in the morning. Right? Some people say, I don't know, I don't have a reason to get up in the morning. You know, 
my life is just plain boring it's just about survival find the plan of god for your life right seek god find out his plan right? and you will have a reason to live find out the plan of god for your life let's look at uh, so notice jesus was being motivated by what by the father's business by the plan of god for his life in another place he says this john chapter 4 john chapter 4 you know how he was speaking to the samaritan woman and then the disciples were in, weren't around him and later they come they see him speaking to the samaritan woman and um, they ask him to eat some food and jesus responds like this right uh, this is what jesus had to say John chapter 4 verse uh, 38 I'm sorry 34 Jesus said Jesus saith unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work Notice the motivation of the life of the Lord Jesus This is what you call consecration and Jesus was moved by the plan of God the decisions that Jesus made it was governed by the plan of god jesus was thinking what does the father want what is the plan of god for my life where does my father want me to go what does he want me to do what does he want me to say see that's how jesus lived his entire life right when we say consecration this is what we are talking about we are talking about living a life that is submitted to the plan of god for us right and jesus in Matthew chapter 26 he has come to the place where he is going to do the greatest act of obedience you know jesus has been fulfilling the plan of god from day one you know from the time he was born right step by step step by step he was doing all that the father was showing him and now he he has come to the ultimate act of obedience you know philippians talks about this in this way go with me to philippians chapter 2 Uh, verse let's read from verse 6 who being talking about our lord jesus who being in the form of god thought it not robbery to be equal with god but made himself of no reputation took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men so jesus set aside his divine glory and divine attributes and he came down to this earth as a man right was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross so jesus has come close to accomplishing what uh, you know god the father wanted in order to redeem mankind right now he has come to the place where he has to obey the father right even unto death right and um, at this moment he is being tempted big time he is being tempted to say no to the plan of god his soul is sorrowful even unto death his body his flesh is shrinking back i don't want that i don't want that suffering right <laughs> did you see this na right? and there is a tussle on the inside of him between what god wants and what he wants right the 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 the, the conflict was so strong that, that there was great stress on his soul the stress was so huge right it was so stressful that even the pores started bleeding right he started sweating blood right that happens only when you are under extreme stress so it is in that kind of a situation that jesus entered into this prayer so that he can overcome the temptation to disobey god see this is what prayer of consecration will help you to do it will help you to continue in the plan of god it will help you to fulfill the plan of god it will help you to overcome the temptations that try to move you away from the plan of god for your life the prayer of consecration will help you to devote yourself to obeying to the word of god and we will talk about those things as we progress in our study right and jesus is praying here notice the response of jesus he is being tempted to disobey god to say no to the plan of god for his life right 
and in that situation he enters into prayer and this type of prayer is called the prayer of consecration now notice this verse 40 and he cometh and okay let's back up a little bit let's read from verse 39 uh, and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying oh my father if it be possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not as i will but as thou will right see he is submitting his will to the will of the father right and that's what our Lord Jesus expects every one of us to do. He expects us to submit our will to His will. He expects us to live a consecrated life. A life of obedience. A life that will follow the plan of God for our lives. Do, do, do you see this? Yeah? And uh, you need strength to do this. <laughs> see, if you are going to do the will of God for your life, you will quickly find out that you cannot do it in your own strength. Even our Lord Jesus Christ himself needed strength to continue in the plan of God. Notice he is facing big time temptation to give up on the plan of God. See, the very purpose that Jesus came down to earth is to save mankind. He didn't come down just to heal people and deliver people. Now, he could have done that sitting in heaven. He has been doing that in the old covenant all the time, right? God the Father has already revealed himself as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals, right? And he has been healing people in the Old Testament. Right? He, he could have continued to do so through the various prophets and servants of God. But, you know, Jesus didn't come down to just heal people and teach word of God. Now, he had servants of God, prophets you know, and, uh, and uh, judges and people like that to, to teach the word of God. The scribes and the Pharisees and the priests and the Levites. Now, they could have done that job. Now, Jesus, the very purpose, the main thing that Jesus came down on the earth to do was to redeem mankind. Right? And now, when he's about to do that, Right? When he's about to enter into that, the devil is saying, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to allow this. I'm going to tempt you. Right? So there, there is this temptation. And Jesus is, is struggling here. Right? There is this conflict on, between, on the inside of him concerning what needs to be done. He knows what the Father wants him to do. And he is going through this phase. He's going through this temptation. And notice Jesus needed strength. The Bible talks about how an angel of God came and strengthened him. Right? Strengthened him. Let's read that passage. Let's go to Luke. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. And verse 43. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Say that with me. Strengthening him. So you need strength to be able to do the will of God. And we are not talking about your mental capacity, your intellectual strength, your intelligent quotient or your emotional quotient. You know, you have this IQ, EQ, right? And we are not talking about your muscular strength and you, the strength of your bones and your stamina. No, we are talking about strength, spiritual strength, strength from God Almighty to be able to do what he has planned for us to do. You need strength. You, you can't just do it in your own ability. Right? Now go with me to uh, first, I mean Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. And uh, we will look at this verse and then we will close. We will continue our study next week. Um, look at this. Colossians chapter 1. There is this great prayer that Paul prays for people, for born again saints of God. Notice. Verse 9, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. What is Paul praying for the saints of God? What was Paul's desire for them? And to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you might walk worthy of the Lord, full unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. And notice what is he asking God for. Right? Verse 11. Focus on that. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power 
and to all patience and long suffering with joyfulness you see you need strength you need might you need some power to be able to do what god wants you to do in this planet see there is opposition for you there is the devil on the outside you have a flesh you have a physical body which has the flesh nature right you have the soul unrenewed mind right which which will uh, pull you away from the plan of god right you have people who dis- discourage you who say things against you who work against you right so you have all sorts of problems in this world you know as it is you have the sin and the curse and the death operating in the world and so in this planet while living on this earth if you are going to do what god wants you to do you, you got to pray you have to know how to consecrate yourself to the father you need to learn how to pray the prayer of consecration you need to know how to you know go to god and receive strength from him so that you can per continue and you can persevere in the plan and the purpose of god for your life right without without that you're not going to be able to accomplish the plan of god eh the only way you're ever ever going to do what god wants you to do is in his strength not in your strength not in your natural strength or ability no not possible eh jesus himself needed strength from god jesus spent time in praying receiving strength from god right so that he can do what god wanted him to do in this planet and that is the same way that's what paul did for himself and that's what paul is praying for his for for people who got saved under his ministry right paul is praying for them also the same thing he they need strength i'm going to pray that they will have strength right we need strength from god almighty without god's strength we cannot fulfill the plan of god for our lives that's why the prayer of consecration and right, it is so very important you need to learn how to pray this so that when the time come when, when you are being tempted to move away from god you can receive strength and you can stand strong and you can say no to the temptation and you can continue to serve god do you understand this yeah we're going to study more about this in the coming segments thank you so much for listening and uh, let me remind you again uh, we have launched a youtube channel if you're listening to this message you would be listening to this in youtube please subscribe to our youtube channel and uh, you know we, we will be publishing word feast messages on wednesday and we will be publishing our prayer messages on friday and saturday in youtube so you will be it will bless you greatly we will also be publishing short video messages every now and then right to keep you nourished with the word of god and these messages will bless you you know they are anointed word of god they will break bondages they will remove burdens they will strengthen your spirit they will bring god's blessing into your life so listen to them it will benefit you greatly and also share it with your friends family relatives coworkers neighbors people who need the word people who love the word share it with them god will honor you and um encourage them to subscribe to our channel Thank you so much for listening God bless you Jesus is coming soon